Wonderful. Make the solution. Here's the concentration we're starting with. Here's the concentration we want to achieve. You got to divide this by three to get that. So if I take the 500 milliliters of the three, 0 0.300 molar acetic and put it in here, and then because I'm careful, I'm going to rinse the vessel that I had the 500 milliliters of acetic in with some deionized water and add that. Now I'm going to rinse that vessel again and add that. That way I didn't leave any acetic acid behind. Did you do that when you diluted one molar HCl, the tenth molar HCl in the lab this week? You were supposed to. And then as I stir, I'm going to add water until I got this volume. Because this volume is three times this volume, isn't it? Which means, by this dilution, I would have changed this molarity to this molarity. I had to make a threefold dilution. The foldedness of the dilution, have you heard this term? Foldedness of a dilution? That's what you have to take the initial molarity and divide it by to get the molarity you're trying to get. So did you repeat how much HAC you added in the beginning? How much? Yes, how much did you add to the... Well, you want moles? Um, sure. Well? How many moles? 0.300. How many moles? How many moles? 0 0.150 moles. You agree with that? Yes. This is half a liter. Mm -hmm. This is moles per liter. So I got half of this. Okay. In terms of moles. All right. We know how to get this. And we also know, we'll write this down as a remember, <coughs> hey, we have this over here. Hey, take advantage of what we already know. Question. Can I take this number and divide it by three and get a reasonable value for the hydronium ion concentration in this acetic acid solution? I took three tenths molar acetic acid, I dissolved it to one tenth molar acetic acid. Does that also change the hydronium ion concentration in the original acetic acid solution to something which is one-third of what it was in the original acetic acid solution. Is that true? Can I take this and divide it by three and get a reasonable approximation of the hydronium ion concentration for this solution? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes! No! How many didn't vote? 5,000 million points off. Or $300 for pizza and beer. Question. You see this equilibrium? At the instant at which I added the water to make the dilution, the equilibrium is murdered. We've done this before. What reaction occurs to get back the equilibrium? Is it this or this? Which one? By dilution, I'm making more of these things, am I not? And that tends to increase the molarity of hydronium ion. Now the dilution factor decreases the molarity of hydronium ion more effectively than the increase in ionization extent. 
But the upshot of this is to realize if I want the hydronium ion concentration for this solution, I can't get it by taking this and divided by three. Now, let's do the arithmetic to find out what the hydronium ion molarity is. We got our recipe. JA is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. X squared represents the hydronium ion molarity times the acetate ion molarity. Now for my 10th molar to 3 sig figs acetic acid solution. I'm going to change it to 2 sig figs. I'm going to change it to 2 sig figs because this Ka value is only the 2 sig figs. I can't wind up with a hydronium ion concentration known beyond 2 sig figs. So I'm going to do this right now. What do I do to solve this? This is a quadratic? It's a quadratic, isn't it? Do you, wish to use, do you wish to use the quadratic formula to solve this? Because if you do in this class, I'm going to incinerate your exam. Ooh, it's nasty, isn't it? Because using things like the quadratic formula interfere with something that I want to have happen. It's called thinking and understanding. And we're not doing that. We're not going to blindly <coughs> shove numbers into programs and get answers. We want to know how to get the answer. We want to know what the answer means. Isn't that terrible of us? We want to understand. Well, let's see what goes on here. I'm going to write a note. If 0 0.10 minus x equals 0 0.10, then x equals the square root of 0 0.10 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Ooh, that's a mouthful. You believe all this? Students often say, well, of course I believe it. You wrote it on the board. <laughs> Is this true? Is this possible? Don't forget significant figures. Is it possible that 0 0.10 less x, which is the hydronium ion molarity as well as, well as the acetate ion molarity, is still equal to x? Hey, if x is smaller than 0 0.005, then this is true. Because if x is smaller than 0 0.005, when I subtract x from this, I do not change this. And keep in mind, your calculator that you have buttons on doesn't know anything about significant figures. But the calculator that you have and should use all the time, this one, has to know about significant figures. Well, let's try this out. Let's believe that when I subtract x from this, I'm not going to change this. That means I cross multiply and find that x is the square root of 0 0.10 times Ka. All right, this gives me the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6. What's the square root of 10 to the minus 6? 10 to the minus 3. So I'm writing x equals hydronium ion molarity equals acetate ion molarity equals something times 10 to the minus 3. The something times 10 to the minus 3 is the square root of 1.8. Give me a g-whiz square root of 1.8. 1.3. 1.3. That's on the money. You accept this? How am I doing this? Is it magic? Now watch out, I'm going to ask you a real tough question. 
What's one squared? What's one squared? What's two squared? Bingo. So that tells us the square root of 1.8 is closer to 1 than it is to 2, isn't it? Because 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4. And 1.3 is closer to 1 than it is to 2, isn't it? And you will find out if you now use the button calculator at 1.3 times 10 to minus 3 is the square root of 2 sig figs of 1.8 times 10 to minus 6. After all, what's 13 squared? What is it? 169. What's 14 squared? Did you do this stuff in high school? Grade school? Do you think it's valuable to have in your noggin information like the squares of numbers from 1 to 25? That's all we're doing. <laughs> this is not difficult. You folks are penalized, but it's not your fault. But I'm telling you what you got to do to get past this problem. It's up to you to do it. I'm telling you, sit down and learn the squares of numbers from 1 to 25. It's not difficult. 14 squared is? 196. 196. So let's put the decimal point in. 1.96 versus 13 squared, which is 169. 1.96 compared to 1.69. Which one is closer to 1.8? 1.69, which means 1.3 is correct. This is no approximation. This is correct. And how do I know this is correct? Well, I found out that it's the square root of 1.8 times 10 to minus 6. Now let's take 0 0.10 and subtract from it. 1.3 times 10 to minus 3 written as a decimal fraction. Tell me the answer. Point one zero less zero point zero zero one three. Keeping in mind that these numbers reflect measurement significance. What is the answer to this problem? Point one zero, point one zero doggone it. <coughs> Your calculator won't tell you that, the one with the buttons on it. But this one has got to tell you that. Wonderful. So we applied this found out that with this application in short order fashion we were able to get the hydronium ion concentration for 0 0.100 molar hydronium I mean acetic acid solution so take a look at this There's the hydronium ion concentration for 3 tenths molar acetic acid. Here's our hydronium ion concentration for 10th molar acetic acid. How do these values compare? Remember, we asked the question, could I divide this by 3 and get the hydronium ion concentration for this solution? If I divide this by 3, I'm going to get a number that's a heck of a lot smaller than this because this number isn't even twice this number, is it? Showing us, showing us that when I take this equilibrium system and dilute it, just as we understood by understanding Le Chatelier's principle, when I dilute this, I cause a reaction to go left to right to make more hydronium ion. To do what? Get us back to equilibrium. How about that? All right, let's carry on. Now, Let's go to question 1820. You can do 1819 on your own. It's just an arithmetic question, 1819. So I'll write this down. For the arithmetic part, of questions 20, 21, and 22. Should you need assistance, you will tackle these tomorrow in discussion class. So I recommend strongly you be there. 
Let's look at question 20. Calculate pHs for half molar ammonia solution, half molar sodium acetate solution, with the half molars being known to two sig figs. What information do we need to solve this problem? Question 20. What information do we need to pursue this problem? Well, that's what we're trying to calculate. What information do we need to allow us to do the calculation? We need the equation. What equation? The reaction equation. What reaction equation? Water. Water? PSI. PSI. We got the PSIs. There's one solution. There's the other solution. Second solution is half molar in sodium ion and acetate ion. We don't care about sodium ion from a pH standpoint. So we got ammonia solution half molar versus acetate ion half molar. What information do we need to calculate pH for each of these solutions? I ask this because I have found that the most common difficulty which folks have in dealing with stuff like this, and I'm sympathetic with this, that's why I'm trying to give you the ability to get past this difficulty, is when you hear a question like the one I just asked you, you don't know what the heck to do. Well, tell me. Here's our PSIs, because that's correct. Always pay attention to PSIs first. Based on the PSI for this solution, what chemistry do we need to consider to get at solution pH? What chemistry do we need to consider to get at solution pH for the ammonia solution? Or, if you prefer, what reaction? You tell me and I'll write it down. Does this reaction equation look familiar as a consequence of what we've been talking about? What's it look like? KB. It looks like KB for what? Ammonia. ammonia. How do I get KB for ammonia? Uh, ammonia ions times the... That's how I write the equilibrium constant. I want to know how I get the value. KB ammonia. KB ammonia equals ammonium ion molarity times hydroxide ion molarity divided by the equilibrium molarity of ammonia. They're all equilibrium values. How do I get the value for KB? KW divided by KA. For? Ammonia. Ammonia? Ammonium ion. Ammonium ion. How about that? We talked about this the other day, didn't we? I'm going to tell you something else. Another thing I've been arguing about with my 2045 colleagues is you teach in all this stuff on a piecemeal fashion. They don't see any connection between this information. I don't do that. When I ask you a question or problem, you're going to have to focus on a number of considerations. Because that's what understanding depends on. Okay? Not fussing at you, but I am fussing at them. So I need KB ammonia for this, and for this what do I need? What do I need? KB? Acetate ion. You know how to get that. The calculation will involve KA for acetic acid, won't it? Because that's the conjugate acid of acetate ion. Now, next question. Which of these solutions will have the higher pH? I'm talking about the things that you should have an idea of before you even do any arithmetic. Which of these solutions will have the higher pH? You got the acid base table? Look at it.
Which of these solutions has the higher pH? Nope. The ammonia solution has a much higher pH. Why is that true? Ammonia is a much stronger base than acetate ion, right? You see the position ammonia has in the base column compared to that of acetate ion. Ammonia is a much stronger base. So these are equal molarity solutions which guarantees the ammonia pH solution pH got to be a lot higher than the acetate ion solution pH. Okay? With that stuff in mind, you can handle 1821. 1822, let's talk in brief about the chemistry for 1822. That will occur, see 1822? I want to know the equation for the main reaction that occurs when I make this system. The equation for the main reaction that occurs when I put together sodium sulfide solution with hydrochloric acid solution. That's what I'm asked to mix. We have a suggestion for hydrogen sulfide ion plus hydronium ion. Any supporters of this suggestion? Hands up if you support this suggestion. Because I want to know how many people are wrong. <laughs> That's messy, isn't it? What do you got to do first? PSI. PSI, goody. Let's have the PSI for the sodium sulfide solution. You tell me and I'll write it down. Water. Sodium ions. Who said what? Hmm? What is that? I want to know the main ingredients, the principal species in the system sodium sulfide solution. I got two of them, neither of which helped me answer this question, but they're in there. What else? Well, this told us one of them. What's the other one? Oh boy, we got there. There's the strongest base in this system. You remember when you put sulfide ion solution in reacts with water, 100% extent? The sulfide's a stronger base than hydroxide. So the PSI is sodium ion, water, hydrogen sulfide ion, and bingo, hydroxide ion, which is the strongest base in the system. So here's the reaction equation we're paying attention to. Now then, look again at 1822. Because if I'm going to do pH calculation, or any calculation, number grinding, what kind of PSI do I have to write? Quantitative. Next question. How many moles of hydronium ion do I have available in this HCl solution? I'm listening. 0.01. Over here we'll write moles. Okay? I heard a vote here for 0.01. Is that what your vote was? Okay. Anybody seconding this vote? I want to see, because I want to see how many people are wrong again. I'm listening. How about that?
Now tell many moles, tell me how many how many moles how many moles of hydroxide ion we got here? I'm listening. In this sodium sulfide solution, how many moles of hydroxide ion? 0, 0. I got to vote for this. Any supporters? Well, we got a few supporters. This is good because this time the supporters are right. Because the suggestion was right. So guess what? When I mix this sul sodium sulfide solution, the ones stated in 1822, with the hydrochloric acid solution stated, described in question 1822, I am bringing together on an equal mole basis hydroxide ion with hydronium ion. When these react, I make water. What's the extent of this reaction? What's the K value for this reaction? What is the K value? I asked you this yesterday, now I'm asking you again. The two sig figs is 1.0 times 100 trillion, isn't it? Because it's the reverse direction of KW, isn't it? Goody. So do you think that this combination effectively wipes out the hydroxide ion as well as the hydronium ion in the system? At least in regard to the initial quantities of each we had? Is that fair? Goody. Now, is the pH of this system therefore going to be the pH of straight water, 7.00? Yes or no? Nope. Why not? Because we still have the, um, the water and the... Water, I got water, that's 7.00. HS minus. Is the presence of HS minus going to give us a basic system or an acidic system? Basic. Well, I got one vote for acidic and one vote for basic. Both can't be right. You got the acid base table? Look at it. <coughs> HS minus formula appears in both columns. Will it react as an acid in water solution? Will it react as a base in water solution? You betcha it's a stronger base than water but a weaker acid than water. So I know the pH is above 7 before I do any arithmetic and I now know since HS minus is dictating the pH what property of HS minus do I need to have before me to solve this problem? KBHS minus. How about that? Now then, percent ionization. A comment and we'll stop there for today. For starters, we've talked about this before, haven't we? For example, we talked about the hypothetical acid 8Z and said it ionized 95%. Okay? So percent ionization is just a measure of to what extent a reaction written left or right proceeds. Expressed as a percent rather than a decimal fraction. Percent ionization equals concentration of derived species times 100 percent divided by m sub i of ionizing solute. And M sub I is just a numerical label on the bottle. So for the acetic acid solutions for which we've already computed the hydronium ion concentration, which means at the same time we got the acetate ion concentration, you can now calculate percent ionization for those solutions. Question. Percent ionization depends on what two factors? <coughs> what does percent ionization depend on? <coughs> reaction extent. Same thing, because percent ionization is a measure of reaction extent. What does this depend on? <coughs> well, that's the equation for the reaction. 
initial molarity. Question, is percent ionization directly proportional to initial molarity or inversely proportional to initial molarity? Inversely. inversely proportional, right? The more dilute, the greater the ionization extent. So we'll write it this way, proportional to 1 over m sub i. What else does m sub i, I mean, what else does percent ionization depend on? K. K A or K B. How does percent ionization depend on K A or B? Huh? How? Did we not just talk about ammonia versus acetate ion solution? Do we not recognize that the ammonia solution will have the higher pH and the higher hydroxide ion concentration because ammonia is a stronger base than acetate ion, which means the ammonia Kb value is bigger than the acetate ion Kb value. So the other factor is Ka or Kb, right? Pick it up from this point tomorrow.